of this point. And I'm sure this point in time will be thrilled and you'll be thrilled when you can all be together after spring. So, um, it's great to you all today. I hope that you all have a fantastic spring. We have our pharmacy students are back. That wonderful group of pharmacy students. And they're going to give you some ideas and some tips and some help you learn what you can do to stay safe and not get in, uh, hurt and sick from poisons. Um, so they're going to do give you a great lesson. And not only will you learn what you can do to keep yourselves healthy and safe from poisons, but you can also learn what you can do to keep your friends and your little brothers and sisters safe from poisons. So let's get started. And thank you all so much. Okay, so as Ms. Kent said, we'll be talking to you guys about how to stay safe and um, keep yourselves from getting poisoned. Um, so I'll go ahead and pass it to Kira to talk about over-the-counter um, medication. Hi guys, my name is Kyrie, and I'm a, today we'll be talking about over-the-counter medication when it comes to poison safety. So OTC stands for um, uh, over-the-counter medicine. Uh, OTC medicines uh, do not need a prescription or a doctor's note to order or buy. They can be bought at gas stations, grocery stores, and pharmacies off the shelf. Uh, more than one person can use um, an over-the-counter medication for the same problem. So if you guys are, if you have a family member that's suffering from um, a congested nose and coughing, and you are also suffering from that problem, you both can use the same over-the-counter medication. But if it was a prescription medication, you probably should not be using the same medication. Uh, Over-the-counter medication, it can be dangerous if it's misused or abused. So you should never take too much of it or make sure you're taking the right product. You should always talk to a parent or a doctor before taking over-the-counter medication. To make sure you aren't allergic to any of the ingredients and it's safe to take and you're taking the right amount at the right time as well. Uh, over-the-counter medicine, uh, is all required to have a drug facts label. And this is a required label by the FDA, also known as the Food and Drug uh, Administration. And so on a drug, lack, a drug facts label, you can see um, an active ingredient, the purpose of the active ingredient, the uses of the drug, the warnings, uh, uh, the one using the product notes, directions on using the drug, um, uh, when to talk to your doctor before you use the drug, uh, and storage, active ingredients, and other information. So in our example here, we have uh, a drug called porphenamine malate, and the purpose of it is to act as an antihistamine to treat different types of allergies like hay fever and, and indoor and food allergies. And so the active ingredient in medicine is what actually helps you get better and treat you when you see um, over-the-counter medication. You got to always be sure to just not mix um, over-the-counter medications with other counter medications because it could cause very serious reactions towards yourself and you could be potentially hospitalized. And so if you're unsure about what you're about to take, it's always good to check with a parent, doctor, or even a local pharmacist just to help you when um, uh, taking these medications. Okay, so um, in addition to that, um, whenever you're taking over-the-counter medications, um, you want to make sure that you use the uh, proper measurements. Um, so some medications will come with uh, a dosing syringe or a measuring cup. Uh, it's important to use these tools so that you actually get the accurate amount um, for each dose. Um, don't use things like your spoons um, as this isn't as accurate. Um, and then with the disposal of medication, um, there's an example you can see with the images to the right. Uh, you just want to make sure that you dump your medication into a plastic bag along with a lot of undesirable things like some garbage or coffee grounds. Um, and then you want to crush it up before you actually um, dispose of it that way. No one else can get into it. No one can use it um, that isn't supposed to use it. Um, and then like I said, you'll throw it away. Um, 
Other than that, you wanna make sure that you store your medication properly uh, to keep those around you safe and to make sure that the medication doesn't expire. Um, keep it away from younger children and store it at room temperature. All right, so today I'll be talking about pres um, prescription drug safety. So it's important that you store your prescription drugs properly and you're gonna wanna keep them in the original packaging so you know exactly what it is that you're taking. Um, you know, keep all the information that your pharmacist gives you when you get your medications. And you're gonna wanna store them away from any children or pets um, just to prevent any prevent, uh, potential poisoning that could happen if someone were to get into it. And then you're just gonna wanna keep them in a cool dry place. And then it's also very important to follow the dosage instructions that are given to you by your doctor. You never want to take a medication um, in a different way than your doctor tells you to because they're telling you to take it that way for a reason. So it's important you follow their directions. And then you never want to take a medication that belongs to someone else. So if it's a prescribed prescription, then that person should be the only one taking it and it's not for you. Um, and then there's also something really cool that the FDA does called the drug take back day. So if there, you have extra prescription medications that are expired or you don't take them anymore, um, you can take them to the FDA and then they will dispose of them properly for you. So you don't have to worry about any potential poisoning in the environment or to other people. Now there's something called the FDA flush list. Um, these are on user expired prescription medications that are on the FDA flush list are those that have a misuse and or abuse potential or can result in death from one dose if taken inappropriately. Um, if a drug take back program is not available nearby, flushing medications on the flush list helps keep everyone safe. Um, some examples are like morphine, fentanyl, et cetera. Um, remember that taking these unused expired medications, even by accident, can even have fatal consequences. So immediately flushing them when you're done taking to put others out of risk if they're on the flush list is very important. Hi everyone, I'll go over some food safety tips. Um, so first and foremost, it's really important to make sure that any meat that you consume is thoroughly cooked. Um, the top right picture here, um, that's chicken and that one, it looks like it might be cooked all the way, but it's not, you wanna make sure it doesn't have a rubber consistency. Um, and if in doubt, there's temperatures that all meats should be cooked to. Uh, beef and pork, you're gonna wanna get them up to 145 degrees Fahrenheit. And then poultry, such as chicken, it's gonna be 165 degrees Fahrenheit to get rid of all the bacterial risks that are associated. Um, with bread, you always wanna make sure that it's there's no mold in it. So like picture to the right, I mean, it's pretty easy to spot. Uh, any green spots on it, you're just wanna, gonna wanna discard uh, discard of it because those the mold is actually fungus spores and if consumed, it can cause some breathing respiratory is issues. And with fruit and vegetables, you're gonna wanna make sure to rinse those before eating them just to get off any dirt contaminants that are on them. And then with food poisoning, symptoms can, can occur um, up to two to three days after consuming the food, it isn't necessarily immediately after. And signs of food poisoning can include cramping, nausea, vomiting, fever, and headaches. So if you're experiencing any of those symptoms, definitely contact either a doctor, poison control, something like that to figure out what to do. So most poison exposures occur in the home. Um, household cleaners, disinfectants, they contain powerful ingredients to clean our environments and keep our home safety. Um, they need to be handled with care in order to prevent exposure to fumes, spills, splashes, and accidental ingestion. Um, so, and they can make you sick when they're not used properly. So you always wanna follow the instructions on the product label to ensure safe and effective use. Um, one thing that's especially toxic is bleach and should not be mixed with anything other than water. And um, as mentioned before, you want to keep the products in their original containers and you want to avoid using these um, disinfectants and cleaners on your hands or skin improperly.
Okay, so I know we've talked a little bit about different types of poisonings or toxicity things. So um, another thing you can be on the lookout for are like plants. Uh, you know, like poison ivy, poison oak, they have the potential to like make you really itchy, but they also can cause like allergic reactions that are very dangerous. So you want to uh, be careful when you're outside and uh, you're like walking through bushes or plants. Um, and a good rule of thumb to uh, avoid these is that um, it has, it has uh, three leaves on the end of it. That usually signifies that it's something that could irritate you or cause a reaction. So like the rule of thumb would be like leaves of three, like you leave it be, you leave it alone, avoid it. Um, so that's some way that you can tell if it's um, poisonous. Uh, another thing you can do for like, I know we mentioned a lot about, you know, your medicine, your vitamins, like always ask an adult before using them, but you can also tell like, um, always check the expiration date, but even if the expiration date says that it's okay to take, you still wanna see if the medicine is like discolored, it doesn't look right. If it in any way doesn't look the way it's supposed to when you take it, you definitely you, you don't wanna take it. Again, ask an adult and Whenever you're in doubt, always call the, the poison control number. So. so what do you do if someone's poisoned? Um, so generally when someone swallows poison, you're going to want to remove um, anything from the mouth. Um, if the person is able to swallow, you want to get, make sure they have two ounces of water to drink. Um, when there's poison in the eye, you're going to gently flush the eye for at least 10 minutes using medium warm water. Um, and also poison on the skin, you're going to re remove all any contaminated clothing that's been in contact with the poison, rinse the skin with large amounts of water for at least 10 minutes. Now, if you inhale poison, you're going to want to get as fresh air as soon as possible and avoid um, the atmosphere in which the poison was contained in. Um, also, if you have any questions or if you need immediate assistance and you forget any, uh, you forget how to deal with the poison, you're going to call the Poison Control Center at 1-800-222-1222. Um, and you, then you're going to speak to a specialized poison um, specialist who will brief you and talk to you about um, what to do. And they're typically nurses or pharmacists. And now we have a Kahoot game. All right. Uh, let me share my screen really quick. Uh, Gerardo Guterres was the student that, that helped us make this quick um, uh, Kahoot game. And so it's going to have 17 questions. And hopefully, you guys have a fun time doing it. Um, let me share my screen. There we go. Share. Uh, da, da, da. Is everybody that's doing the Kahoot, is it going to be individual or is it going to be team? It's going to be individual. They're getting the laptops right now. Okay, sounds great. And can I have like about a guesstimate of how many students there are? Fourteen. Fourteen? All right, that's great. Thank you. Let me close that, close that, close that. All right. And classic. All right. 
Well, that should be everybody, right? Okay, am I good to start? All right, thank you. All right, here we go. All right, first question is true or false? Active ingredients are the ingredients in medications that help you get better. Right. Yeah, so the active ingredients and over-the-counter medication is the ingredient that has the purpose of making you feel better with whatever condition you're suffering from. All right. All right. The first place we got Sean. All right. Second question. Which of the following is not included in a drugs fact label? Right, so everything else is included, active ingredient is included, storage information is included, directions is included, but the price is not included in uh, the facts label because there usually is a lot of different products, that do the, a lot of different name products that do the same thing, maybe just from different companies, but they all have different prices. So everything else though is usually kept the same on a drugs fact label. Okay, we got Conlan in first place, and Joshua Savage in second, and Janya in third. All right. Unused expired medications that are on the FDA flush list are those that. Yeah, so the unused expired medications on the FDA flush list are those that have a potential for abuse or are usually abused a lot. And so you just wanna make sure that you put those medications away once you're done using them, if you haven't finished the prescription or if you, if you just, if they're expired and you don't need them anymore. Yeah, all right, next question. All right, same placings except for fourth and fifth, we got Margit, Mar, I'm so sorry for mispronouncing your name, and Jaden, I'm so sorry about that. All right, fourth question. Examples of drugs on the flush list include all except, this one's kind of a hard one if you're not familiar with drugs, but if you're paying attention to the slide, you should be able to get this. Yeah, so Tylenol. Tylenol is actually a medication to help you uh, relieve fever-like symptoms. And so that is one that you could, is an over-the-counter medication that you can actually just get at a gas station or a grocery store or local pharmacy. All right. First and second place still the same. Now, true or false question. Bleach is not toxic. It can be mixed with anything. Yeah, I'm very happy that everybody got that question, right? Yeah, so bleach is very toxic. <laughs> if you have it, if there's a large quantities or in a high concentration and it, you should not be mixing it with everything. Yeah, so we still have the same placings as before. Great job, everybody. All right, which of the following is an example of a household poison safety?
Yeah. So with um, with your cleaning items at home, you just want to make sure that you're not inhaling them, you're not drinking them, you're not placing them on your skin because it's going to either poison you or cause you a lot of irritation. And so you just want to make sure you always keep your products in a safe place away from little kids so they don't ever mess with them. And then you want to make sure you're not mixing bleach with anything. Usually water is the only thing you can mix bleach with dilute or make uh, bleach even weaker than it already is. And then just make sure not to use uh, cleaning products on your skin. Okay, switching it up a little. All right, well, we still have Conlan in first place. All right, what temperature should you cook beef and pork? So this is the minimum temperature you should be cooking beef and pork, and this was guidelines set by the FDA. Yeah, so it's 145 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's this temperature because that's where the FDA says that that's where you're killing uh, the microorganisms, germs, and other parasites or any viruses that's contained into the beef or pork. If you cook it to that temperature, most of them, about I think 99% of them, are just going to be killed that way. So it's always good to just cook it to that temperature just for your own health and safety. All right. We got Conlan still in first and Fadian uh, Fatina. I think I'm, I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name in second now. Signs of food poisoning can appear how long after eating? Yeah, so signs of food poisoning can appear about two to three days after eating. And so you just wanna make sure, that's why to always make sure you're eating something that has been washed, cleaned, or cooked thoroughly, just so you don't get sick because it could take a little while for it to develop and it could cause you cramps and nausea and it could even make you vomit. All right, Conlin, stay, staying in first I see. All right, true or false? Chicken should be cooked 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, so the answer is true. With beef and pork, it's 145, but with chicken, uh, chicken is a little thicker than beef and pork, so sometimes you just have to cook it even hotter just to make sure that there's uh, nothing wrong with the meat. So while beef and pork is 145 degrees Fahrenheit, you have to cook to, uh, you have to cook chicken to 165. And you can use a food thermometer to check what temperature uh, the meat is, whatever you're cooking, just to make sure you're cooking it all the way through. Oh, okay, we got a new first place leader. She's on fire. All right. And so oh, six correct answers in a row. That's amazing. Let's in the next question. You may use kitchen spoons for measuring medication. Yeah. So you should never use kitchen spoon for measuring medications. Most over-the-counter medication or even prescription medication comes in a pre-dosage form as a form of a pill, or even if it's a liquid, it'll come with a measuring cup. It'll tell you exactly where to put, um, where, how much, uh, how much solu of the solution you have to fill it up to. So it could be like five milliliters, 10 milliliters, or 15 milliliters. So you just want to use the measuring system provided by the uh, over-the-counter medication or prescription, or just take uh, the pill of whatever um, is prescribed to you. All right, seven answers in a row. Let's see if she could keep the streak up. All right, number 11. Which of the following is true regarding storage of medications?
Right. So most medications can, can be kept at room temperature. So that is about 75 degrees Fahrenheit, about ranging from about 7 to 70 to 78, I think. And so unless stated otherwise, you should just keep everything out in a cupboard and in a dark place. But room temperature is just perfectly fine. Eight correct answers in a row. I've never seen anything like that before. That's amazing. All right, on to the next question. Medications can be mixed with coffee grounds when disposing of them. <laughs> so can you mix medication with coffee grounds when you're trying to throw away uh, your medicine? Yeah, so you wanna make sure when you're throwing away your medication that you're trying to mix them with a product that people can't use that medication once you're done with them because you don't want anybody else to get sick or potentially poison themselves. And so you could mix them with coffee grounds and by doing so, it can potentially inactivate the medicine and make sure nobody else could use them. And you could just throw it away afterwards in the sealed container just to make sure nobody uses them. Ooh, she lost her hot streak. Sorry about that but you're still in first place. Okay, and with a decent lead. All right, now we got Joshua Savage with three answers in a row. All right, multi-select. So this is a multiple choice question. Uh, you could just pick more than one answer. So what happens when you use expired medication? Right, I'm very happy almost everybody got that. So when you use expired medication, it could just not even work at all, or it could make, potentially make you even sicker than what you are when you're trying to use the medication. So expired medication, I don't know any expired medication that makes you feel even better than before. So just try to remember that I never use expired medication. Oh, wow, all right, Joshua Savage with interest streak of four. All right, I think this might be the last question, though. so a oh, second to last question. Mixing over-the-counter medication has no negative consequences. All right, so false. So there's a lot of over-the-counter medication and there's a lot of over-the-counter medication that has the same active ingredients. But even if they have the same active ingredients, you wanna make sure not to mix them because some have different uh, mechanism of actions, which means pretty much that they have different ways of working to stop your problem or fix your problem. So if you take too many of the same uh, medications from different brands, uh, it can actually potentially hurt you instead of helping you. All right, last question. Let's see who ends up in first. All right, so all over-the-counter drugs must come with a drug label. Is this true or false? True, so I'm very happy everybody got that. Yeah, so all over-the-counter drug uh, drugs that are sold must come with a drug label. This was, uh, this is a rule by the FDA just to make sure people know what's going in their body and that they're just taking the right product. All right. In third place with 10 out of 15 questions of right, we got Margaret. I want to say that's her name. I'm sorry if I've mispronounced it. Joshua Savage in second place. And Fadiana in first place. You said it correctly, Fatiana. Okay, thank you. I was so worried. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great job, everybody. Thank you for participating. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. Fifth graders, what do we say to our friends from USF?
family or your friends, make sure that you um, keep the food in a cooler so it stays cold. And the things to remember are, for general, for food safety, keep the cold foods cold. So like if you're going on a picnic, make sure that if you have a sandwich, students taught you today is to keep hot foods hot. So, you know, like cook the turkey and the hot dogs and the chicken and the grill all the way through. So remember, keep cold foods cold and hot foods hot. And I hope that everyone has a great spring break. And thank you so much to Ms. Quintine for inviting us. And thank you so much to our pharmacy students. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Great. Thank you so much. So it's